today we're going to do a psalm spell for gratitude. That's right, we're going to do a psalm spell to increase our gratitude. And the reason why that's so important is that if we can count our blessings every day, if we can acknowledge our gratitude, then we start to have a different uh, cause in our mind. Because there's two worlds. There's a world of cause and the world of effect. And the world of cause is in the mind, and the world of effect is in the world of circumstances and experiences. So to try to create change by moving around circumstances doesn't really work so well. So we want to change things in the realm of cause, and that's what psalm spells do. In this regard, when we do a psalm to increase our gratitude, we also increase the things for which we are to be grateful. So it really helps to speed up our blessings when we do a psalm like this. So we're doing psalm number 90, all right? And the way we work this is we say the psalm through once, like in, uh, as the incantation, once without stopping. And then we go through and we mine for each and every seed inside that psalm. So we take each verse one at a time and we contemplate the inner meanings of each of those verses. And by doing that, we are planting those seeds deep within our mind so that we can reap the results that we desire. All right, so here we go. Psalm 90. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, forever thou hadst formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return ye, children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquity, sorry, thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, return, O Lord how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. All right, so there's a lot there. That's, a, that's quite a psalm, isn't it? So we'll get through this one little verse at a time. Here we go. All right, so... Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. So what is the Lord? Who is the Lord? We always have to um, define what we mean when we say things. And for us, the Lord is not a deity. We have to remember that. It's not a deity up in the sky. It's not something that's separate and distinct from us. It's not a man. It's not a woman. It is principle. It is the principle of infinite intelligence. It is the principle of infinite life. Uh, um, perfect love. So there are so many thoughts about God that, that we can think that will put us on that beam of understanding what the Psalms are referring to, or at least what we are referring to when we read the Psalms. So that is our source. There is one source. There is one substance. There's one force in the universe, and that is the Lord, and that is our creator. And this creative principle is a part of us. We are not separate from it. And so we say we are as a sunbeam to the sun. And, and so that we, we are not just connected 
to the Lord, you know, because we were good and somehow we got connected to the Lord. We emanate from the Lord. <laughs> so we are constant emanations of this perfection. So that's what we mean by Lord. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Okay, so when we talk about generations magically in the Psalms, when we, we, we read these things magically, not religiously. So we're looking at everything as parts of our, of our mind. So when we say generations, we're talking about generations of thoughts. We're talking about thought form after thought form after thought form. We can be also talking about generations of our lifetimes, of, of us as, as souls rather than as individual egos in little lives. So thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. So our totality of the totality of our identity is, uh, has been dwelling in infinite intelligence. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So for us, we, we can even look at that uh, magically. Before the mountains were brought forth, that means all the big things in our life, everything big in our life. Or forever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, meaning before we had circumstances, before things seemed big, before we even had things to think about, we were already there. We were already there. We were already dwelling in God. Thou hast turnest man to destruction and say as return ye children of men. So when you turn, when, when we say God has turned man to destruction, we're talking about turning us to, um, uh, when we ask to be delivered from our problems, then what, what we're saying is please destroy everything that is not like who we really are. Destroy that which is false from our life. So then we, so then God turns us to destruction and calls us back. It's also known in the, in, in the Psalms as, the, as God's judgment. And we want God's judgment. So God judges what's what's real about us, and and then and then helps us to let go of everything that that we don't want. Um, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. So, um, <laughs> so a thousand years in in the sight of God. We're talking about this is the very same thing as as what's talked about in the in in the. Um, the tales of of the of Celtic fairy world um, that that time goes differently in the celestial world than it does here in the in in th this this earth plane. So uh, we're we are discussing and describing our eternality. That when we who we are in in the world of a soul, who we are as when dwelling with God, um, that that is timeless by comparison to what we experience as time. Uh, right? Thou, so it's just a, a thousand years here is just a night there, right? Thou carriest them away with a, as a flood. Oh, before I leave off of that, that's that's the mystery of Rip Van Winkle in that story. When, when he fell asleep in the world of the fairy, he came back, he was an old man because it was just one, one day there was a hundred years here. That's a similar kind of idea. Uh, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. Remember all these things which we no longer want. All of these things which are not, that are not part of who we are, are just taken from us. They're just carried away. They are as they they are just like a sleep. It says in the morning, they go away like a like like when you wake up in the morning. It's like like the grass which groweth up. In the morning, in the morning it flourisheth, it groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and it withers. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thine wrath are we troubled. Okay, so now this is a this is when we say that God is angry and we're troubled by God's wrath, we are describing a process that the that the Psalms comes back to again and again that we call projection. So we are projecting our own problems, our own vain imaginings onto God and saying, God must be angry with me since I'm going through whatever I'm going through. So whenever you're troubled, uh, the, 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 um, the tendency is to want to say, why is this happening to me? Why does God hate me or whatever? What did I do to deserve this? And that's not what's happening. We, we are actually reaping the results of our own vain imaginings. And so that's what we're asking to be delivered from is the very thing that we think that God is doing to us. He wants to take from us so that we no longer are troubled by it. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, 
our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. That's what we want. We want God's light to shine through in all those little secrets, all those things that we think we should keep from God. We want to bring them to God. You don't wait until you're perfect and then you go to God. You go to God so that you can remember your perfection. You don't you don't try to take away all of your your imperfections and then go to God. You go to God and then he shines away those imperfections because he knows they're not real. That's what God's judgment is and that's what this the psalm is doing for us. This is a psalm of gratitude, but we're grateful. We in order to be grateful, we have to look and see what it is that we're grateful for. And so so we have to allow God to shine away. And when I say God Again, I don't mean up in the sky. I mean the, the infinite intelligence. We have to ask that infinite light to shine away all that is distracting us from this. And so that we can be grateful for what is real and not and not not try to not try to superimpose gratitude over a bunch of illusions. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a t- as a tale that is told. Again, we're talking about we're talking about these, the, if we spend our lives as a tale that is told. So we feel as though we are just, that our lives have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and that there's a moral to the story. And that's not the way God sees things at all. So we say that we're, that our days passed in God's wrath and that, that we're just in God, and, and that our story is just, you know, beginning, middle, and end, and then we're over. God doesn't see it that way. God's not angry. God's saying, well, as soon as you stop projecting your wrath onto me, then I can take you out of this, con- this, this insane idea that, you're, that your life is like a story, and I can put you into the eternality of, of who you are and where you live, and you can recognize that so that you can become just as immortal as any other spirit. Uh, the days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they become fourscore years, yet it is their strength, that yet it is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Okay, you could go through and 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 maybe look at some some numerological ideas about what those things mean, but for us today that doesn't really matter. We're talking about how w- w- we live here long enough, and we may be able to even extend our lives a little bit, but. It's just for labor and sorrow. It's going to be cut off and we fly away anyway. We're looking at our lives here as as the tempori, a temporal nature of what they are. But that's okay because we don't care about the temporary. We care about the immortal. We care about the eternal. And that's what we're grateful for is what is what lies beyond all of this stuff in this world that can that can go away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. This is again projection, projection, projection. We are still in this idea that it's God's will for us to be punished. It's God's will for us to have problems. It's God's God must be angry with us. So it's really hard to get to the gratitude when you're afraid of God. So God is very patient until we come to the realization that we're not that he's not angry with us. He doesn't he's not uh, he doesn't have wrath and he's and there's nothing to fear that he's actually going to be there to to give us the the desires of our heart. And um but it, but he has to wait. He's very patient. And when I say he, it's just because of this that we're using this book. It's not a he. Okay, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, to number our days doesn't mean to like, okay, let's let's just shorten our lives here. To number our days means to count them. It means to count our blessings. It means to actually count what we're grateful for. So if we number our days by counting our blessings that we can apply our hearts unto wisdom. That means if we can see what it is that we're grateful for and we are very systematic about that, then we can dedicate our hearts and apply it to wisdom. So so our hearts in in the um in the Psalms represent the subconscious or the deep mind. And when you know something by heart, it means that it's a part of you. It means it's been integrated into your deep mind. So if you know what you're grateful for by heart and you've memorized those things, if you count them constantly, if you're going over and over and over that which you're grateful for, they become part of your deep mind. And then when something becomes part of your deep mind, it starts to act, activate itself within reality. So what you become grateful for expands and grows. And that's wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Let it repent thee concerning thy servants. So God never left us. 
So if it looks like God's left us, it's because we have yet to count those blessings. We have yet to put in our work. We are working against, we are attempting to work against God anytime we feel that God has left us. It means that we have turned our face away from God. So if it feels like we're alone in the world, it's because we've made ourselves that way. And all we have to do is remember the qualities of God, and that's how we turn our face back to God. And if we can remember to count the blessings for which we are grateful each and every day, that turns these blessings into wisdom. Uh, make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. So again, we this is still, the psalmist is still projection, projecting, but we understand where he's coming from. Regardless of what, of guard, regardless of what the afflictions that my eyes seem to be reporting to me, let us be a glad, let us be glad anyway, even in the midst of it. If we can be glad in the midst of apparent affliction, that delivers us from the affliction. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. Ah, okay. So God's work, God's work is is the only reality. What is God's work? God's work is, is, is extending him, her itself extending itself. So God's work is the work of creation. So if God's work appears in his servants and the glory unto their children, that means that that God's uh, God's work appears in, in the servant, meaning us, as we're doing this psalm, and in our children. Yeah, okay, that's okay if you have children. Yeah, we want to bless your children, but that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about magically, so this working this psalm magically. We're talking about all the subsequent thought forms that are born out of it. Just like we talked about the ego yesterday, how the ego is like the kingpin of a bunch of negative thoughts. Well, God is the kingpin of all reality. <laughs> so we want to have we want to have new thought forms born out of the of of, of working with God in, in in the world of reality, which which we can find through this practice of gratitude and counting our blessings. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. The beauty of the Lord. The beauty of infinite intelligence. Infinite beauty. Divine infinite beauty. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. So the work of God's hands is the work of creation itself. We are creating. We are, God is creating through us. We are co-creators with God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that means, I mean, that's a platitude that a lot of people throw around like, oh, I'm a co-creator with God, but they don't even know what they're talking about. But we understand what that means now, right? When we co-create with God, that means God creates as us, through us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. That's like that every creation becomes imbued with immortality rather than just, you know, problems and, you know, things and things and things like we were talking about earlier in the psalm. <clears throat> Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. So isn't that beautiful? So everything that we think, everything we do, everything we try to have, everything we try to create, if we do it, if we allow God to do it through us, if we allow infinite creation to do it through us, then it's it's established. That means it's immortal. It can't die. So all of the all of the creations that we do through God are immortal. All the all the things that we try to create separate from God are subject to death because there's there's no, no substance to them. There's no substance to them. So how do we get there? It, it was very it, it's sort of subtle in the psalm, but it's to, by counting those blessings, looking and seeing what it is, memorizing the very things for which we are grateful, so that we don't have to think real hard if we if if, if we need a little shot of of gratitude, we can go right back through and just go. Oh, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. I'm blessed with this. I'm blessed with that. And we and we just name them. We go through them, and then by the time we get through as many as we can think of, um, we're, we're back on the beam. And it's a very quick easy way of getting back on the beam where magic happens. You've got to remember the flow. The flow is from within to without. It, that's the flow of creation. It comes from God to manifestation. You can't manifest from manifestation to God. It doesn't work that way. You can't, you can't create God from the world. God creates you and, and through you, you can create as well. And then those things manifest themselves in the world, but the world is just the reflection of it. It's not the thing. It's not the thing itself. All right. Does that make sense? I hope so. It was great working with you on this psalm today, and I will uh, 
see you again very soon. And until that time, blessed be.